Hey there and welcome to the shop. In today's video, I'd like to introduce you to Blue Demon's e 99 electrode. In this video, we will discuss some of the details of this electrode, some safety concerns and how to deal with them, and a short demonstration of the product. Filler metals are manufactured into different forms and classified into different categories. You can identify the type from the beginning letters. The AWS classification for ENI 99 is ENI-CI. Some of the most popular AWS classification types begin with E for electrode, ER for electrode or rod, or B for brazing. In our case, ENI 99 is an electrode. Electrode simply means the filler metal carries the welding current in the process. Adversely, a rod would not carry any current and is heated by another source. An example of this would be the TIG welding process. The next letters designate the chemical composition of the filler metal or undiluted weld metal. In our case, the NI indicates the electrode's composition is a nickel alloy. And finally, the CI is appended to the end of the classification to indicate this electrode is intended for cast iron. This designator cuts down on confusion for similar types of non-cast iron electrodes. ENI-99 is composed primarily of nickel. Nominally, it contains 99%. ENI-99 is used in the shielded metal arc welding process. It's available in rod sizes 332nd, 1/8th, 532nd, and 316th. This electrode can weld in all positions and utilizes DCEP welding current. ENI-99 is designed for welding gray cast iron or cast to dissimilar metals, such as mild steel or stainless steel. ENI-99 is very machinable, so often weld specifications will call for root and fill passes with ENI-55, then cap with ENI-99. The ENI-55 will be stronger and more ductile, where the surface will be more machinable using the ENI-99. When welding, a preheat and interpass temperature of nothing less than 350 degrees Fahrenheit is recommended. ENI-99 is used in a wide array of applications. Some of the common uses are machine bases, motor housings, farm equipment, gears, large castings that need to be machined, or when cast needs to be welded to mild steel. Other weldable alloys include nodular iron and some non-ferrous base metals. Check out Blue Demon's website for more product details or instructions for ENI-99. Let's stop here for just a moment before I begin the demonstration portion. We need to talk about safety. The welding process can produce harmful light, fumes, sparks, and flying slag, just to name a few. You should always wear the proper clothing and safety gear while welding. This includes, but is certainly not limited to, a welding hood, welding jacket, or long sleeve shirt, I would suggest cotton or wool as synthetic materials may melt to your skin. Next, select the proper thickness of gloves, ear protection, and safety glasses. One should always wear eye protection during the welding process. Here's a tip. Many welders will wear a small respirator like the one seen here. It filters out some of the harmful things floating in the air. The other thing it does is direct the hot air you breathe down and out of your hood. If you've ever welded before, you know the lens can become so fogged you can't see anything. 
Now that we've covered the safety portion, let's set up a few coupons and I'll demonstrate this product. I'll be right back after I get my gear on. Welcome back. Now that I got my gear on, let me explain what our demonstration will be today. So first off, I have a scrap piece of cast iron with a few grooves cut in it. This will give me some place to test my welding on just to make sure I've got everything synchronized and, and I'm, I'm running my beads good. Our actual test piece will be this exhaust manifold. This, this piece has a few cracks in it, so what I intend on doing is locating the end of one of the cracks and I'll, I'll identify the ends, I'll drill two holes, that'll stop the crack from spreading, then I'll groove out the crack, and, and there's a few good cracks, they're pretty straight actually, so we'll groove that out and then we'll, we'll put on our filler metal and uh, get this repaired. I am finished padding beads and I am ready to begin welding on our exhaust manifold. I have drilled a couple of holes in this to stop the crack from spreading. What I'm going to do now is use our torch. I'm going to heat up this entire piece up to temperature. Uh, I think I'm going to be somewhere targeting around five to seven hundred. Don't have to be super precise, just got to be got to be warm. Uh, need to keep it above 350 degrees if I have to do multiple passes which I fully expect to have to do because of the rust on this part. Uh, sometimes exhaust manifolds don't work out. They just uh, can't get them to weld properly and you just can't really trust it. But um, we're going to give it a go and I'm going to get this up to temperature and um, let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, uh, right here, I think there might be just a little bit of underfill right there in the little groove. Must not have gotten that edge really, really well. But uh, as soon as I clean that up more, I'll be able to tell. But other than that, uh, over here to this side, slag came off real good. Really good feel down here. Uh, actually really happy with this repair. Uh, we'll get down and, and check this this other side over here, but uh, if that sh is good, then then the repair is done. We'll just need to uh, keep this warm and slowly cool it down to finish the repair. But uh, other than this one side, as soon as we get it cleaned out, we'll we'll know then. But uh, with that, I guess we're done. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today and please remember Blue Demon for all your welding needs. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.